Hello guys, I had, I had actually just finished uh, recording a video here and uh, it looks like my uh, internet connection went out. It's actually fine, you know, it's back now. Network 6 connected. But, you know, you gotta know how to repair any problems that you have in a Windows computer, so. You're gonna wanna type in CMD, this is just, you know, what you do from the operating system, just in case it's EOS. And there is some other things you can do, but we're just gonna focus on this one right now. Um, it could be malware, it could just be a network cable unplugged somewhere, it could be a modem or a router that needs to be restarted, but you know. This is just a starting point for people, you know, I recommend fo following the OSI model for uh, this troubleshooting. Because that's really what it's best at, you know, the OSI model is a really good troubleshooter. So what you want to do is you want to open up an administrator command prompt like I just did there. You just want to type in CMD. Right click run as administrator. I'm not going to do that right now because I don't need to. So one of the first things I like to do is I like to uh, just flush my DNS. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. IP config slash flush DNS. There you go, it uh, flushed the DNS resolver cache. One of the things I actually do really want to point out here is that uh, if you are having trou troubles with your internet, one of the things that I highly recommend is taking something like Google DNS or uh, Open DNS. I personally use Open DNS, you know, just whatever is the best for you in your region. I mean, if you live out in an area that doesn't really have any nearby Open DNS servers, then Google DNS would definitely be the way to go for you or maybe even some other DNS provider or you could just set up your own DNS server. But a lot of the times the ISPs actually don't update their uh, DNS servers quite as much as a company like OpenDNS might. So I found that I was running into some pretty esoteric network attacks that he said actually picked up and the way, th and the way that I resolved it was I switched to OpenDNS and I flushed the DNS resolver cache. So I'm going to go ahead of here and I'm going to go to network and internet. There we go. You're going to want to go to network and sharing center. And then you want to select change adapter settings. This is in your control panel by the way. So you're going to want to find your connection here. So this is the Spotflex virtual network device driver. This one is currently disabled because I uninstalled it. Spotflex is just a VPN. This is the VMware Virtual Ethernet Adapter. That would be like my virtual machines there. You don't need to worry about that. But you'll see something here called Local Area Connection. You may see more than one of them, but generally, you know, it's going to look like this. One of the uh, most common, I guess, connectors, or one of the most common network interface cards is the Realtek PCIe cards, so it's going to go here and you're going to select uh, properties. There we go, so you're at your local area connection properties, you're going to want to go ahead, you're going to want to set internet protocol version 4 TCP IP v4. You're going to want to select properties, and it, I'm not going to mess around with this because uh, I don't want anyone selecting anything that they shouldn't select and screw stuff up, so this is this is for another video. Um, I would actually don't personally mess with this myself, you know, I just use DHCP. Um, DHCP basically automatically assigns you an IP address, so your router or your modem will do that. Maybe your router or modem co combo. But, uh, you know, actually I never even really bothered that much with this myself. So, you know, just stick with DHCP, especially if you're a home user. If you are running a server or something like that, you may want to just go ahead and use the static IP. That would I that would be ideal if you're running a server that was uh, connecting to the internet. But if you're just a home user, just go ahead and use this. Here, just use the DHCP addresses that are automatically assigned to you. So you're going to want to cite to use the following DNS server addresses here. So, as you can see here, I have the uh, open DNS server addresses selected here. So you're going to want to select in your preferred DNS server or your alternate DNS server. Google is 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8 and 4.4.4.4. .4 .4 .4. 
Um, if you want, you can just type in what I have here on my screen. That'll work fine for you. Um, you could just select validate settings upon exit, but you don't really need to if it works fine. Um, you don't really need to worry about anything here. So you can just select OK. There may be an apply button here that you need to select, but uh, you don't really need to worry about that for now. So we're going to close that out. And now that we've actually flushed the uh, DNS resolver cache, one of the things that we're going to do is going to release the IP address and then we're, and then we're going to renew the IP address. So we're going to start with this. So you're going to want to type into the command prompt ipconfig slash release. This may take a moment depending on how long your or how fast your computer is, but uh, don't be alarmed. Your internet connection will drop while you're doing this. So you're going to want to go ahead and you're going to want to type ipconfig slash renew. <laughs> see, it even took a little bit of time on my computer. So you can see the uh, internet actually just returned here. Alright, so this is one of the things that I usually like to do. Um, there's a little bit more that you can do here. Um, I do recommend you run through and you troubleshoot. You know, you try to ping www.google.ca. If your uh, DNS servers aren't working, there's not going to be a reply here. Um, it would just say, you know, lost packets, you know, sent four, received zero, lost four kind of thing. That's what you'll see here. So uh, it's just going to be lost packets here if your DNS server isn't working. But it could also mean that your internet's not working. So what you're going to want to do next is you're going to want to ping 8.8.8.8. So that's Google's DNS servers. You can easily ping that if you like. I mean, the... The address is always going to be there. Basically what DNS does is it uh, translates the IP address, which is, you know, your 192.168, whatever, whatever address, and uh, translate it to something that uh, is readable to you and vice versa. So, you know, Google might be 256, 192, whatever, whatever, but... Uh, how do you get there? You know, you don't type in your IP, the IP address for Google.ca or YouTube or Facebook. Instead, what you do is you just type in www.google.ca and you're there. So, uh, basically, if the uh, DNS servers are down and that uh, and your internet's still up, that means you're going to want to change your DNS server settings to something else. So, uh, the way you find that out is you ping 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8 or 8.8.8.8, .8 yeah, that's right, number of eights. So you're just going to select enter. And basically, if you get a response here, that means your internet still is up, your network's not a problem, your computer's not a problem. The only thing that is a problem is that your DNS servers are not working for whatever reason, you know. Um, that isn't something that you really need to worry about too much. Um, if you are using your ISP's DNS servers, I do recommend you go to whatever your ISP's website is to launch a complaint or you call them up and you say, Hey, at uh, 9.34 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is my address, you know, this is my account. You know, there is a problem with the DNS servers and this is how I found out. So uh, you can just basically have them pass that information along to the systems administrator and what the systems administrator will do is they'll check the DNS servers to see if there's any problems that caused it. You know, maybe there's a power failure or something and they need to get an APC backup for their server. So uh, one of the other things that you can do is you can try resetting the TCP IP stack. Um, I can't exactly remember what the command is for this, but... Uh, Sometimes I just randomly start typing in stuff. Um, I think it's a uh, int ip reset. No, it's a. Uh... Can't remember what it is. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna Google it. Reset TCP IP stack. So you can find a command here. Um, just open whatever. And then here's a command, 
Oh yeah, so it's uh, the net shells. So you want to use net shells? Net sesh. I can't say that properly. You don't need to worry about the uh, reset log, but you can just uh, you need to do a reset log just in case because you know if there's ever a problem, you can just tell them that you did a you reset your TCP IP stack when you bring it into a local computer shop, and uh, you can just say you know there's a reset log that uh, saved on my C drive. Um, could you check it out? You know, it might uh, it might give us some way to what uh, might give you some hints as to you know what the problem is. So, a lot of us actually don't do that, you know, not everyone does, you know, it depends on the problem, but uh, I know a lot of people actually just do go ahead and they run the repair utilities, because, you know, it's going to repair a lot of extra stuff, and, you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing, and, uh, you know, if you end up removing malware and you end up doing all this extra stuff for a customer, you know, they're not going to be back in two weeks complaining that, you know, you didn't fix the issue. Um, that's a lot of the problems that computer people run into is that, uh, or PC support really, I should say, run into is that uh, the users don't really understand the processes that go through, you know, how complex an operating system or a computer is, you know. They think, you know, post hoc ergo propter hoc, you know, first before then after or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it is off the top of my mind, but, uh, they think, you know, they brought uh, your computer to, they brought their computer to repair shop, you know, you fixed it, and then they brought it back, and then there was a problem, so by uh, virtue of just uh, events lining up, you're the one who caused the problem, so you're going to want to go ahead and you're going to uh, run netsesh, int, ip, reset, and just run it like this if you want, but I do recommend you do a log. So c colon backslash reset log dot txt. I do believe I actually do have reset log already on my computer, so I'm not going to go ahead and do this. So you can just rename it to anything you want. Reset log 100 dot txt. Um, just to keep in mind though, um, I don't know necessarily if this is uh, pertinent pertinent for Windows 10, but if you do go ahead and uh, want to put spaces, you know, put in a log, login, random. You're, you're going to want to make sure that you do have quotation marks here. Um, it may not be pertinent for Windows 10, but you know, duh. So uh, it'll tell you, you know, um, resetting global, okay, resetting interface, okay, resetting neighbor, okay, resetting path, okay. And I'll just say resetting failed. I usually do run into that a lot. Um, I'm not necessarily sure why it's doing that. It does say access is denied, so you know that it's probably the reason why. But uh, it'll tell you that you want to restart your computer to complete the action. You don't need to right away, but uh, I, I of course do recommend that you do so. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to close out of my uh, web browser here. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to close out of this here, but um, if you want uh, just to close this, uh, if you just want to clear this window, you can just type CLS. Alright, you can just exit out of here, and then you can go ahead and you can start and shut down. Well, thank you very much guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video on uh, Windows. Uh, actually, you know what? There's one more thing that I thought about um, besides the malware and besides what we've already covered is the drivers. So you're going to want to go to your device mangler, so device manager, just open that up, type it into your search. Um, you're going to find the uh, network adapters over here. Let me just make this bigger here. So the network adapters right here. So uh, you can just maximize this and this is going to be the Realtek PCIe GBA, GBE family controller. So. Again, how you determine which one that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go here. You're going to go to uh, you can go to your control panel. Oops, that's the uh, MSI Control Center. Don't want to open that up. Now you're going to want to go to uh, not here. So you're going to want to go to network and internet. You're going to want to go to network and sharing center. You want to change it change adapter settings, and you're going to find the local area connection which is the Realtek PCIe GBE family controller and that'll be the one that's right here too. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to close these out here because we don't need them open. Uh, Alright. So you can just go here, you can disable, and then you can uh, view, let me see here. You can scan for hardware changes, that's what I think you do. You don't want to delete it entirely, but uh, this sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. What I do recommend you is you go to the Real Tech website and you download the driver. Um, I always just make sure, you know, I have a copy of a good, well-known driver that I have, you know, something that I know will work, and I make sure that I have it on, uh, on my computer, you know, on my desktop. So, uh, if there's ever an issue, you know, I can just run the installer for the driver, and, you know, we're good to go. Um, that's ever if Device Wrangler, for whatever reason, doesn't want to work out. Because, you know, it could be the problem with a, uh, source file or the installer files or just the files in general for the uh, network adapters being a problem there. So uh, you just want to make sure that you are covering all the bases. 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 Anyways. Um, we basically covered everything here that I think I want to cover for this video. Again, there could be issues, you know, your ethernet cable is unplugged or you disconnected from your Wi-Fi. Um, you're obviously going to want to check that out first because you don't want to sit here for 5-10 minutes diagnosing problems with Windows when you can just uh, look right over here beside your uh, desk and you can see that it's unplugged. So, you know, you can try restarting your router and your modem. I usually start with the network with the network first, you know, I start with uh, resetting. I start with uh, just checking all the wires, you know, I Make sure that everything's plugged in properly, you know, I go to my switch, I go to my router, go to my computer, make sure all the Ethernet cables are plugged in properly. And then I go to the router slash modems and I make sure that they're always started and, uh, yeah, that usually works. Um, one thing, important thing to, to mention is that, uh, routers will die out on you pretty fast. Um, basically you're getting a computer out of it. Um, you're getting a cheap $20, $30 computer. You know, you can't really expect that to perform exceptionally well. So, I always recommend, you know, every couple months, you know, sometimes they run out, you know, a month later. Or three months later. So, you know, I recommend you replace your modem every couple months. Um, Asus is a company that usually does a fairly good job at uh, decent consumer grade routers, but, uh, you know, like anything, you know, it's, it's a bit more expensive, but you are getting a little bit better quality out of the product in general, and you may even get a little bit better speeds. Um, another thing to note is that if your modem is crapping out, and if you have to restart your modem just to be able to, uh, achieve full internet speed or to be able to return your network connection, call your ISP immediately. Just, just do it, um, and, uh, ask them to come down here, you know, tell them that you've troubleshooted everything, everything else in the network is absolutely fine, and all that you want to do is you want them to replace the modem. They should, they should do it for free. They don't always do it for free. If you have a modem rental, they should do it for free. Most people just rent the modem because it's only a couple bucks a month and it gets replaced, you know, whenever they want it to. Um... If there is like a local um, store in the mall or something like that, you know, Bell, Rogers, you know, they usually have stores in malls, you know, they do have stocks of old modems or newer modems that need to be replaced, you know, they have refurbished ones, they have new ones. So, you know, just bring your old router in there, or your, I mean your old modem in there, and, uh, you know, say, hey, I'm having an issue with my modem, it uh, keeps causing me problems, you know, I have to constantly restart it all the time, and you know, I'm constantly losing my work because of it, you know, the internet keeps going down, it keeps dragging its speed, it keeps going to insanely slow speeds, can you guys please replace this, and uh, you know, I've done this before, you know, personally, I went into the shop and they're just like, yeah, here's another one, I'm just gonna... You just gotta make sure that you bring in your old one for me, and uh, you're good to go. So, uh, yeah, that's basically all that you really have to do for now. You know, there's more advanced stuff that I can help you get into for networking, but uh, for just a home user, it's not really much that you're going to need to be concerned about right now. So, I guess this is it for now. Thank you guys very much for watching. This is, in fact, the end of the video. So, thank you very much. 
And if you have any uh, questions or comments, if you want to know a little bit more, if I wasn't necessarily clear clear on something, then feel free to tell me, you know. Um, I'm glad to rephrase it in another manner, and I'm glad to help you out. If, uh, if there is any issues in a video, please, please, please tell me. Um, I'm willing to admit when I'm wrong. Thank you very much. Have a good day. I'm just going to stop this recording here. Bye.